Welcome back to another torch video. Today I have the limited edition S1A baton. This is the raw copper one, so this is untreated. There are also a couple of other finishes available with this torch. Now the packaging, just like the other special edition I looked at, is quite different from the normal Olight packaging. You just get an overview of the company. Um, you don't get any details or specifications. Opening up the box, you will see that the torch in this one is sealed. It has a plastic seal around it. We have the manual and hand strap on the right hand side in the top. Now this plastic is quite thick. I assume it's there to protect the finish. Um, but to open this up, you'll need to pull it quite firmly there's a cut section at the top, just give that a tug and you'll need to rip it open to get the torch out. It's pretty stiff, takes a bit of effort to get that out. And once it's out, we have the torch and we'll have a look at that in a bit more detail in a second. And the top compartment has the strap, same as the other Olight straps, so it's adjustable and you have the metal pins there just to help you thread it through the eyelet on the base cap. Onto the user manual, it's basically the same as the normal S1A and this lists out the different power levels. This can take AAs as well as the 14500 cells where you get that extra power level. So the run times are included on this too. And the operation is identical to the normal version of the S1A, the aluminium version. Now this doesn't have the lockout on some of the other Olight models, but they have added a timer to it. Looking at the torch, as it's copper this is actually a very good material for dissipating heat it's a uh, very efficient so you'll feel the torch warm up when you have it turned on particularly at the higher power levels but it dissipates that heat very quickly and copper is actually quite a nice material it's quite dense as well so it feels good in the hand now taking out the protective cover exposes the battery this is a 1.5 volt lithium so you have a choice i'll show you the cells here nickel metal hydride you can use alkaline as well and in 3.7 volt lithium as well as the included battery now when i first opened this up i noticed that there were a couple of slight differences the first was that it was easier to insert the 14500 cell here they're normally longer than aa cells and the standard nickel metal hydride that i put actually went a bit further into the body so you look at the two side by side the aluminium on the right hand side you will notice there's a slight difference with the design on the body. It's not very obvious, but you'll see here when I take the base caps off, you can see the body on the copper version is slightly longer. The threads are slightly fewer. And when I put the cell in there, the lithium, it extends on the aluminium, whereas it's just below flush on the copper. So they've extended the length of the body on the copper one, but to counter that, they've reduced the size of the base or tail cap. So the, the overall length and size of the torch is actually basically the same as the aluminium version. So that's an interesting design choice there. I couldn't see any other differences between the two torches, but that is a welcome one. It makes it a bit easier to insert those uh, lithium cells. You don't have to put as much force, apply it to the base cap. Now comparing it to the S1R, the S1A is a bit longer, but thinner. You do have the advantage of the dual power uh, batteries with that and comparing it to the Rofus TR10, which is another small torch, they both have magnetic base caps and a similar size. The Rofus is a touch longer, but you do have that swivel head function, which is quite unique and I find it quite useful. Now, checking out the weight of the two torches, the copper one is obviously a bit heavier. This is quite a small torch, so I've done some metric and imperial measurements for you to have a look at. It's about 84 grams. There's no battery inserted into either of the torches when I'm doing this. And we go over to the aluminium one. So you can see here about 38, 37, 38. So we're looking roughly around double the weight with the copper one. It's a bit more substantial. Now I've got the S Mini, which I didn't have in before, just to show you the size difference. Now we're using different batteries. There's pros and cons uh, for both. The S Mini is the smallest lithium powered torch from Olight that I've used. Now I've decided to polish both of them up with some brass so you can see the effect that that's had. From a practical point of view, there isn't a lot of point doing this because they both tarnish. And there's a natural degree of protection and corrosion resistance with copper. Um, so that it's really just for show, but it, they do look nice if you want to polish them up for display. Some people collect torches and flashlights. One thing you will notice when you take off the 
clip which is stainless steel there is a year of production and a number so that gives you the actual production number of the torch and it's the same on the s mini 2 now you can reverse the clip on this if you wish though it does stick out very slightly from the top there was one trick that you could do with the aluminium version is to twist the base cap to give yourself a lockout as such as in kill the power but you can't do that with the copper one because it's just full metal across all of it whereas the coating on the aluminium would uh, would mean that you could use that as an alternative to a lockout or the lack of lockout as far as the operation goes this is exactly the same as the aluminium version so there's no differences i would have liked if they'd have had that electronic lockout on the side switch but that's a small point that's something that i would look at for a future version now I, what I'm going to do instead of doing a full review as I've done previously with the S1A I'm just going to do some additional beam shots. We have the S1A here in the moonlight mode and the S Mini. I said in the S Mini review that I felt it was a bit brighter and this confirms it in the moonlight mode. So it's probably a little bit over one lumen and on the TR10 which doesn't have a very very low uh, moonlight mode. That's the lowest power setting onto the S1A outside. If you're wondering what the power level for the AA batteries are, the non-lithium, it was just below the turbo here. And then this gives you the full power that's only available with the 14500 cell. Onto the S Mini, this is a warmer tint, so you'll notice a difference in the color balance. It's uh, definitely slightly more orange. The power output's pretty similar, and I'd expect that to be the case. There isn't a big difference in the output. The Rofus TR10 is quite an unusual torch. It has a orange peel reflector. It's quite shallow, so you get a very wide field of view, but it has uh, an area in the middle which has a bit more punch. You have a bit more power there, so you have slightly more range on the TR10. This is just some beam shots. We're at about four to five foot quite close. So the S1A, the copper version here is a cool white. We're on the S Mini, you can see it's uh, quite a bit warmer. This is a neutral white tint, pretty close, virtually identical. And the TR10, you can see slight difference there in the beam pattern, a bit more emphasis in the middle and a bit less illumination around on the edges. We'll do a few longer distance shots. This is with the 14500 lithium ion cell. And once you step up to the power levels, go up to the top level we're on about 600 lumens here so plenty of power with the lithium cell but still decent power even if you're just using uh, AA cells on the S mini you have less uh, steps in the power mode but you can see here there isn't an awful lot to tell between the two of them in terms of their maximum power output moving on to the Rofus the TR10 and stepping up through the power levels on this. Slightly different beam pattern on this. You can see the emphasis in the middle more, but the peripheral illumination is still fairly good to the eye. Just the quick strobe mode. You only have one with the S18 and that hasn't changed. There is one potential advantage possibly with this because it's metallic and shiny. If you do drop it, it might be easier to find than the black version. What I'll do is link to the original review that I did so that you can have a look at the operation and the, how the torch performs in terms of the beam shots with other torches. The magnetic base on this remains the same, even though it's a bit heavier, so it can possibly slide around a little bit more, but it's still fairly firm, so that's something which isn't really a concern. So it's really down to whether or not you like the materials that they've used, and I think the copper is a nice version, perhaps not a must-have, but that small change to the length of the body does make it possibly a better buy if you are a regular user of the lithium cells. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful and don't forget to subscribe or I'll be looking at more torture reviews very shortly.